Um, let's see. Welcome to FBB Forum. I'm very pleased to welcome the beautiful British female bodybuilder, Lee Kiruz. Is that the way, right pronunciation for your name? Uh, Kiruz, yeah. Kiruz, excuse me, <laughs> to the podcast. Um, Lee has competed in bodybuilding shows, but currently has switched her focus to CrossFit and has kept up her excellent physique. And welcome to the podcast, Lee. It's really great to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. It's an honor. <laughs> thank you. Um, so my first few questions are about how you got started in bodybuilding. I was curious if you had an athletic or sports background before you started. Uh, no, no, no fitness at all um, in any sport whatsoever. Um, I started lifting weights for the first time at 26, so it was kind of like an all-in experience at that stage. <clears throat> That's great. When did you start competing in, in bodybuilding? Uh, also in, in two th no, sorry, 2014. That's when I started. So I was 26, 2014. That was my first year of competing, and I started in bikini. <clears throat> Very cool. Um, and who did somebody convince you to start or, or was kind of motivated you to start doing it? No, I mean, what happened initially was, I, so I was recovering from cancer. Um, I was severely underweight, weighed 35 kilograms and just wanted to get healthy. Mm -hmm. And then I met one or two people who said they were in bodybuilding. And I looked at their physiques and I was like, okay, well, you know, as one, one does, like, how hard can this shit be? Um, as it turns out, it's quite hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I did my first show and I came third. <clears throat> and then it kind of snowballed from there. I was like, I, I love the process and I loved all the hard work and, and the pro and the focus and the dedication that it gave. Uh, so that's where it started. Wow. How, could you tell me a little bit about your cancer recovery? What, what happened? Uh, so I had cervical cancer, um, <clears throat> full remission. And then I just wanted to get healthy, put on some weight, but the right way, because before I ate, complete shit and I, I wasn't even conscious of being healthy it was just kind of like living life whereas after the the issues it, it became a real focus of getting healthy and making sure that my body was as healthy and as as primed as it could be <clears throat> oh wow I understand no that's great and and congrats on the recovery from cancer too oh Now, um, I was curious when you first started competing in bodybuilding, did you get nervous up on stage in the bikini or, and do you get nervous, you know, in your recent shows or even doing CrossFit? Um, <clears throat> to, to be honest, like it, it, I got nervous backstage. Um, but the moment I actually stepped on stage, that nerve kind of went away and I just focus on what I needed to do in terms of posing and whatnot. Um, CrossFit I actually get more nervous with surprisingly enough than I did with bodybuilding really <clears throat> yeah why is that do you think I think it's because with CrossFit it's it's a lot more kind of like you have to be in the moment whereas and 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 you you're competing against other people and you can visually see where they're at and you have to keep up with them um so it's that mental battle of having to keep up with them and trusting yourself whereas with bodybuilding even though the other competitors are on stage you can't really compare yourself to them and when you're doing the quarter turns and whatnot yes you can compare yourselves backstage and and kind of wonder who's going to look the best on stage but in the lineup you can't really compare yourself yeah. <clears throat> all you can do is present your best package that's cool how long have you been doing crossfit uh crossfit i've been doing for two and a half years now two and a half years really wow yeah. that's great yeah um very cool yeah that's interesting that yeah i can see that may, maybe being more nervous with crossfit though than than bodybuilding but yeah they, they both have their own elements and i enjoyed them both that's great <clears throat> do you think you might do bodybuilding again or do you, are you going to stick with crossfit I'm I'm kind of a, one of those all in kind of people. So when I was bodybuilding, I was 100% all in. When I was in powerlifting, I was 100% all in. Now that I'm in CrossFit, it's kind of like my goals. I haven't achieved my goals yet, you know. So like with bodybuilding, my goal goal was to get my IFBB Pro card. Got that. <clears throat> powerlifting, the goal was to break records. Got those. So now CrossFit is kind of like get to the games and do well at the games. So it's still 
getting that goal before I refocus and decide what when my next goal would be. <clears throat> sure, I understand. That's great. Yeah. Um, now, um, I was curious, when you started with bodybuilding, did you have a bodybuilding or fitness role model? Um, I mean, I really loved Dana Lynn Bailey. I think she was kind of my initial inspiration yeah. uh, because she was kind of like the face of female bodybuilding at the stage that I started. Mm -hmm. So, she, and I, I, I didn't know a lot about bodybuilding at the time that I started. So seeing her was kind of like the biggest inspiration at the time. That's great. Yeah. She's, she's a role model for so many people, I think. And, um, including on this podcast, her name comes up the most, I would say, but she's, yeah. she is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> she's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, um, in terms of, uh, um, your, your training between CrossFit and bodybuilding, um, do, do you have a, a preference for one of those? And is one of them more, would you say injury prone for you or? I mean, for me, obviously the safer route is definitely bodybuilding. It's everything is controlled and structured and it's muscle mind connection. It's not necessarily about how heavy you're lifting, but how you're lifting it. So form yeah. is everything. And to be fair, form is everything when it comes to CrossFit. You can't just manipulate the weight, especially with Olympic weightlifting. <clears throat> no matter how strong you are, if you can't get the technique right with Olympic lifting, you're not going to be able to snatch. You're not going to be able to clean because you cannot <clears throat> pull the weight. You can't cheat the technique. Um, and I think that's a big misconception with CrossFit is people think people with CrossFit, you kind of just swing weight around and you're, you know, just manipulating and using momentum as much as possible. And it's not really the case. A lot of my CrossFit is very strict movements. It's about strength. It's about conditioning. It's about working up the, <clears throat> the volume, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, with each movement. So a lot of my bodybuilding, I actually bodybuilding training, I actually retain and continue within CrossFit. It's just the added elements within CrossFit of doing cardio and the Olympic lifting and <clears throat> capacity work as well as gymnastics. So they each had their their highlights, and they each had had their negatives in terms of I fucking hate cardio. So. You know, no matter what, whether it was dialing in for for a bodybuilding comp or doing it for CrossFit, I don't like cardio, um, yeah. <clears throat> but I do um, love the strength work. That's great, very cool. One thing I forgot to ask you when about in terms of bodybuilding, which division did you turn pro in? Uh, women's physique. Women's physique. Oh, very cool. Yeah. That's great. And did you end up making a pro debut in that? No, I actually I was preparing for my pro debut when COVID hit oh, um, yeah. and then that kind of snowballed so I, because I was going to do Chicago and Tampa and all of those and I'd submitted all the information and booked the flights and then of course COVID hit and, and that's actually how I found CrossFit because when you're stuck at home with no equipment you've got to kind of figure out how to train body weight yeah oh that's cool I'm sorry. Yeah, COVID was was a pain for everybody. I think, and <laughs> it was tough on the bodybuilding world for sure. So yeah. Oh man, sorry about that. But yeah, no, it's good that you're you're doing CrossFit and, and that you love it too. Um, I was curious when you competed in bodybuilding, did you get feedback on where you needed to improve your physique? Yeah. So I mean, initially I did bikini. Uh, and the, the feedback was always, you're coming in too hard, you're coming in too hard, your abs are too prominent. And it's one of those, like, doesn't matter what I do, my abs show. Yeah. And, you know, when I'm at 15% body fat, I have abs. When I'm stage lean, my abs just pop more. So my abs actually were counterintuitive for bikini because I was just too hard. Yeah. Um, and that's what actually pushed me out of bikini was my abs. Um, and then when I got to women's physique, um, it's pretty much my biggest flaw is the thickness of my waist. Okay. Um, at the, at the, my leanest, my waist is 28 inches. And when you, you're com comparing yourself to someone like Shanique K. Grant, who's got a 24 inch waist, 28 yeah. inches, is a big difference in terms of, of width. Uh, and no matter how much I grew my lats out, uh, and got my shoulders bigger, my waist just wasn't thin enough 
uh, and I quite have quite an up and down physique. Um, <clears throat> I don't have like an hourglass figure. Sure. So manipulating that with muscle is all I could do. Uh, and it didn't, it wasn't as aesthetic as someone like Shinny K. Grant, uh, Latoya Watts, whatnot. And which is why I never did figure because the figure girls have an even smaller waist. You know, they have that real X frame. And I always felt like physique was better fitted for my physique. Um, because I had the chunkier waist, but then they started to change the criteria uh, towards more of a figure look, in my opinion, with Shanique K. Grant. And I felt like it kind of limited people who had a slightly thicker waist. Sure, I understand that. Yeah, and your your abs really do stand out. And um, yeah, I understand what you mean too about the, the, the waist size and thickness. Um, do you find um, in terms of uh, your your CrossFit training, has that helped you with what you need to improve on for bodybuilding, would you say, or, or no? Um, I mean, I, it probably has not helped with my waist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with all the deadlifts and everything, my waist has probably gotten a little chunkier, which probably has not helped with bodybuilding. With yeah. Bodybuilding, I didn't do any core, any heavy deadlifts, simply to try to mitigate any further stress um, strengthening of my abdominal wall and my obliques uh, whereas now I, I have to do functional training so it's a lot of core a lot of um, oblique work so yeah. my my abdominal wall has gotten thicker my waist has gotten thicker uh -huh. um, ironically enough with all the gymnastics handstand walks handstand push-ups um, and the snatching and the cleaning my shoulders have actually gotten bigger and rounder right. uh, and they were always a weak element when I came to bodybuilding so my shoulders actually really come up with CrossFit really that's terrific that's really good yeah yeah that's great yeah that I think that's important to kind of help with the x-frame you know having the bigger shoulders yeah yeah um very cool now I was curious in terms of your physique just your your per personal preference what would you say is your favorite muscle group and What's your least favorite? Um, my 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 most favorite is probably my abs and my shoulders. My least favorite is definitely my ass. Your ass? Oh yeah. <laughs> Why? Oh, it's not. It's just not up to me. <laughs> because because I don't have an hourglass figure, I have more of a square ass than uh -huh. necessarily a round voluptuous ass. Um, so, you know, if I had a wellness ass, I'd be posting ass shots for days, but I don't have a wellness <laughs> ass, so <laughs> it's very bricky. Oh, sure. I understand that. Well, I think it still looks really good, though. So. <laughs> um, very cool. Now, um, when you competed in bodybuilding, what would you say is was the toughest aspect of competition prep for you? For me, it was definitely the mental game. Um, because no matter how lean you get, you're always picking apart your flaws mm -hmm. uh, and you're always self-doubting. And then no matter how lean you get, no matter how shredded you are, you think you can be better, you think you can be leaner, you you compare yourself to other girls and it's that mental mental game, 100%. Uh, the diet, I didn't mind. I could do the diet. I could, I could starve. I could deprive myself. I can push myself to the limit. Um, and I think that helped for getting as lean as I did I mm -hmm. never was a very very big bodybuilder I, I was you know I was able to cut really well but I never put on size particularly well mm -hmm. um but definitely the mental game was by far the hardest and you know you you finish your comp prep and then you go back into off season and then, then you look back at those photos where you didn't think you were lean enough you didn't think you were good enough and you were like fuck man I was good enough I was lean enough I was shredded what was I even thinking at that point in time to think I wasn't so yes mm. 100 percent mental I understand that what about mental um uh, uh challenges with CrossFit is it is it comparable or is it more so with with um, bodybuilding what you say uh, I think it, also with CrossFit, it's, it's very mental, uh, but it's mental in a different way. So mm -hmm. mental in when you're doing a workout, if you give up mentally, you've given up. Like, you know, like there are 100% times when I'm doing a workout and I'm like, oh, there's running in there. Oh, there's double enders in there. And I literally go in already have given up. 
Mm. Uh, and it completely changes your demeanor. It completely changes how you approach the workout because you've already, already given up. Mm, and, and you see it a lot when you see people working out uh, doing the wads and you can see oh that one's tapped out they've given up they you know so it's it's mental in a different regard it's in the in the moment mental uh that makes sense it crossfit just seems like it would be exhausting you know <laughs> watching them on tv and they just there's so much you know it seems so arduous you know the the process of, of all those events and yeah just seems like it would be exhausting <laughs> now sometimes i contemplate if i should have chosen um strongman strong women competing rather than crossfit because there's less cardio <laughs> oh yeah i understand yeah yeah that that's strong women and strongmen competition seem to be getting more popular too they definitely are growing in in popularity yeah yeah i worry about those because it seems like there's some injury you know concerns there too you know <laughs> yeah definitely with the loads it's it's definitely more injury prone yeah i would think so now i was curious um with when you were doing bodybuilding did you have trouble with that kind of transition between um off season shape and and competition shape like a body dysmorphia and do you have kind of body dysmorphia as a crossfit competitor so, I mean, it was hard bulking. And as I learned throughout, it, the, the the more bulky you got wasn't necessarily the better. It didn't necessarily translate into more muscle mass. The yeah. heaviest I got was 85 kilograms. And in terms of my stage weight, my stage weight was 59. Mm -hmm. So that's a big cut that yeah. I had to make, you know, 20, 25, 26 kilograms, including a water drop. Um that's a that's a big change in weight yeah. um I, you know like i didn't enjoy the puffiness mm -hmm. and that's the one thing that i do like about crossfit is that i retain a leaner physique uh and a more functional physique and mm -hmm. there's no need to cut and <clears throat> and to load and whatnot um and the nice thing about taking a step back from purely aesthetics and, and focusing on how you're looking with mm -hmm. the CrossFit is that you can actually start to appreciate your body a bit more. I mean, I still won't walk around with my top off kind of like, you know, I still have that conscientiousness of knowing how lean I've been in the past and yeah. how shredded I've been. And that's obviously still my favorite look is the sh super shredded 59 kilogram person mm -hmm. but I also know that that isn't a healthy physique and that's not something that I can maintain year round mm -hmm. whereas where I'm sitting now 68 69 kilograms I'm mm -hmm. lean enough <clears throat> to maintain that year round to be healthy year round uh, and still to perform optimally for CrossFit mm, that's great yeah that's great you kind of found a happy medium there it sounds like yeah yeah, for your physique and for your health too. So that, that's yeah. really good. Um, now I was curious, do you have a career outside of um, bodybuilding? Because I think it would be tough to juggle bodybuilding with the rest of life, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, like I do, I do do personal training um, and that's kind of like what I do. I don't do in person because I just don't have enough time in the day. Um, but yeah, I do do personal training as well. That's great, yeah. Do you have um, clients in the U.S. too, or, or just mostly in Europe and U.K.? No, I have clients all over the world. So from South wow. Africa to the U.K. to America, they're pretty really? much all over. Wow, that's great. Yeah. You have to kind of schedule time-wise to be tough sometimes, I bet. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and um, now I was curious, you know, you, you've obvious, you know, you're obviously British and you live in the U.K., but I was curious, where do you live in the U.K.? and, and have you found that that's kind of a supportive bodybuilding community there? So I'm actually from South Africa. Oh, are you? Uh, yeah. So I moved to the UK just over two years ago. Uh -huh. So I, I can't really comment about bodybuilding here because obviously when I moved over, I was I was doing CrossFit. Um, so it's more kind of like I was in bodybuilding when I was still in South Africa. And I found bodybuilding was... <clears throat> They, they have like a very uh, small fish, big pond syndrome in, in South Africa where they think highly of 
themselves, but when you compare themselves to the international physique, it's not necessarily the same. Yeah. Um, and that's why I actually competed overseas to get my pro card. I, I actually won my pro card in the UK oh, because okay. um, I tend to get judged down a bit in South Africa, especially when I was in bikini. Hmm. Uh, and I'd look at overseas and I'd see what the girls were doing overseas and I'd be like, but that's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm wanting to look like. And they were like, no, but that's too hard for South Africa. Oh, uh, so they actually have slightly g different judging criteria in South Africa. I'm not too sure if that's the same. Um, but at the time, their judging criteria was like, if you won a bodybuilding show in South Africa and say, let's say, um, wellness, body wellness, you would then drop to bikini if you wanted to compete overseas because the wellness of South Africa is a bikini overseas. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Is there is there even much of a bodybuilding community there in South Africa, or is it? It must there, be relatively there is, small. There is actually quite a big bodybuilding community. Um, I mean, a, a couple thousand, and mm. it, it comparative to the size of South Africa, mm -hmm. it's 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 not popular like rugby. Um, and 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 other sports but it definitely has has a niche market within South Africa mm, that's really cool that's interesting that your background and uh do you like living in the UK yes yeah very cool are you in London now or is that sorry so now we're we're living in Nottingham um so oh, cool. so not not in London it's too built up and and cement like in 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 London so I prefer yeah. being out a little bit more in the countryside that's great very cool that's awesome um i just have a few more minutes left but i have a few more questions for you um now i was curious i, I know you have an only fans account i was curious how long have you had that account and have you found that that's a good way to connect with your fans yeah i mean like i've had only fans for let's say about two years um, in the beginning, I wasn't so proactive on it. It's only been the last, let's say, six months that I've really started to ramp it up. Mm -hmm. And it is a nice way to connect, connect with people and especially the bodybuilding. I, I, my focus for OnlyFans is more of the bodybuilding community and muscle worship and that sort of thing. So it is nice to meet people in that regard. That's great. And get a little extra income too. It's nice too. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely helps. That's great. Very cool. Um, and I, I was curious, um, if you were in a leadership position, um, what would you do to improve the sport of bodybuilding and how would you make the sport better? And, and same question for CrossFit too, if, if you could, um, how would you make that better if you could? I'm not too sure. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, bodybuilding has become more universal universal in that re in the regard that you know there's now an npc in south africa um and sorry in, yeah npc and other federations mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i mean for someone who's coming from south africa it's it's a lot harder to break into the npc ifbb market than other countries but mm -hmm. i do think they are gradually opening up I mean, I do think they, I think they need to support the athletes a bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, like you pay in and you pay in and you pay in and there's not much money remunerations. And I mean, I'm, I, you, one of those things is kind of like, I make more money mm -hmm. from OnlyFans than I would make winning a bodybuilding show. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, it, it, it puts a taint to it. It's kind of like one of those, so, what you're saying is I need to have an OnlyFans in order to compete. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's not as much support, especially for female bodybuilding than male bodybuilding. Yeah, that's and true. Sponsorships and that sort of thing, especially if you're a bigger girl. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a bikini girl, it's easier to get sponsorships. But the moment you start crossing that border into figure female bodybuilding, and this you are a very well-known name, the chances of you getting sponsored and support isn't as big, you know? So yeah. I, I think support, especially for the females would be nicer, especially when you consider the fact that a lot of CrossFit females look similar to 
um, bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. Obviously not stage lean, but they have similar physiques. And the CrossFit community in terms of females is a lot more widely accepted, even mm -hmm. though the girls are big and they are muscular. But they get that support and they get that financial remuneration far more easier than a female bodybuilder. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I've even noticed with CrossFit, seems like CrossFit in America is more common to see on TV than it is bodybuilding. You just don't really see bodybuilding on TV, unfortunately. But yeah, um, and yeah, I think you're right too with women um, just get um there's not as much prize money, certainly not as much sponsorships money. And so, yeah, I, I totally understand where you're coming from on that. I mean, like I understand that it's a business and they need to make money and female bodybuilding isn't as financially viable as the males that mm -hmm. they're making the majority of their money from the men. But it's also, it's also one of those kind of like, there is wings to strength. There are female bodybuilding shows for women and that support is coming and it's growing but I feel like in terms of recognition um it's still a very niche market in the rest of the world and the rest of the world kind of view female bodybuilding as this very niche 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 market and yeah. it's not wildly acceptable and it's a pity because I feel like it puts women off training and it's it puts women off going to the gym because they have this association with being big and bulky and looking like a man, even though they have no idea how important training is, you know, just for bone density alone, it's so important to get in the gym. Hmm, that's a good point. Yeah, I think there is a lot of misperceptions about about bodybuilding and, and what you need to to attain that kind of physique to um yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wish I wish it would get back on TV again, like ESPN and NBC here in the US used to show it a lot. And it's been years, you know, but that, I think that helped introduce a lot of people to bodybuilding that maybe got interested in it as a result. So yeah, yeah. So um, I just have one more question for you, um, just because we're running low on time. Um, yeah. but I was just curious, um, what are your parents and other family members think about your bodybuilding journey? And are they supportive? I mean, I think they were supportive to a degree. I don't, the thing is they don't understand the sport. So for them, it's, they didn't really see um, the value in it. I mean, they, they would support me as much as they could without understanding the process and everything that was involved. So they were there in their way and, and they cheered me on um, just like they do with CrossFit. They, they cheer me on without truly understanding the sport. So they're there in their own way. That's cool. Yeah. That's good to be, at least be there, you know, for you. <laughs> yeah. I think that comes up a lot on this podcast though, that family doesn't necessarily understand bodybuilding or, you know, um, something like CrossFit too. So yeah, I understand yeah. that. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lee. It's really a pleasure speaking with you and um, I'll, I'll get this posted relatively soon um, um, and tag you and everything on Instagram, but thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you have a lovely evening and sorry for being a little bit late. Oh, no problem at all. No, this worked out fine. Thank you. And it's a pleasure Perfect. speaking with you. Perfect. Have a lovely day, Kova. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Bye.